Big vibes, stay blessed or stay less. It's your boy Black Finesse. We're here for another video, and this one's called What If We Can See Space Time? Question mark. An immerse experience. This came out seven days ago. I meant to watch it earlier. Um, I think from the thumbnail, this is like a visual representation of what it actually could look like if we imagine it. Like space time. Imagine what space time would look like. Let's get it. I'm excited to watch. You know, I'm a space guy myself, astronomy. Welcome back to Science Click. Welcome back. Today, to let's embark together on yes, a visual sir. journey through space and time. And time. Let's go. We are in intergalactic space. Billions of billions of kilometers from Earth, we are lost between two neighboring galaxies. Okay. Our own, the Milky Way. 90,000 and light. Andromeda, another galaxy also made up of hundreds of billions of stars. 200,000 light years in diameter. That's the largest. Around us, space is almost perfectly empty. For all this, we are not nowhere. A web is woven around us. It is the web of the universe itself, space time. That's this dope. imaginary grid That's made up of a multitude matter, right? of small Kinda. particles will allow us to visualize the invisible, the geometry of the universe, and to understand its dynamics. That's tough. It's like a web, a giant From like where we are, the grid is calm, motionless. Nothing disturbs it, and if we throw a marble, it zooms straight forward, moving away through the void forever. Mm. In reality, the grid is not perfectly static. If we fast forward, we see that it drifts very slightly, like a river which flows into the stars and whose current carries everything with it. The stars, clouds of gas and dark matter, effectively distort space-time, pulling the fabric of the universe in their direction. Mm, okay. Very slowly, the two galaxies are getting closer, and in several billion years, long after we disappear, the Milky Way and Andromeda will eventually merge and become one. While Andromeda is getting closer, researchers discovered at the dawn of the 20th century that most galaxies actually move away. Yeah. As a whole, the universe is constantly expanding. Like a fabric that stretches, the grid swells more and more and carries galaxies away from each other. As this expansion progresses, the wavelength of their light is stretched and turns red. We know today that Red this expansion away, accelerates, before, right? stimulated by still mysterious dark energy. The expansion would have begun 13.8 billion years ago. Extremely compressed, so much containing only a mush of fluctuating energy, the universe would have distended suddenly to reach astronomical dimensions in a fraction of a second. This is the Big Bang. I mean, of course, that's how far it What travel. was there before that, no one really knows. Tiny Negative fluctuations I becoming guess gigantic smaller. would have what attracted matter, condensing it into filaments, halos, then galaxies and stars. I mean, this is before everything started? Oh, this is before Today, we, we, we live near one of these stars. The sun. Around the sun revolve multiple bodies, Planets, asteroids, and comets I'm not moving gonna, freely in the circular. grid of the universe. The immense mass of the sun curves space-time, and the fabric of space falls towards the star, taking everything with it. How does it curve time, though? This is how the planets orbit without moving away from the sun. They move straight forward, but the current continuously pulls them back towards the center. Hmm. To a lesser extent, planets also attract the grid of the universe in their direction. For instance, the Earth holds the Moon, its natural satellite, as well as all our artificial satellites. Right. The International Space Station zooms straight ahead through space-time, but space-time is curved by the Earth and prevents it from moving away. Gravity. At a faraway distance, the grid flows slowly, and an object passing fast enough would have no difficulty escaping the pull. So it's based on speed. But the closer we get to the center, 
the denser the flow becomes and the more the grid accelerates. On the surface of our planet, rockets must reach a very high speed to take off from the ground and escape the Earth. Which is true, yeah. So it's a speed thing. The grid converges towards the center, and if we drop several apples next to each other, space-time will bring them together in one direction and stretch them apart in the other direction. This is called tidal forces. It is the same action that the moon inflicts on the Earth, causing movements of the water on its surface. Yeah. The back and forth motion of the tides How is caused is by the spin though? of the Earth on itself. Is gravity much it stronger? rotates in approximately 24 hours. This motion of all its mass affects space-time and very slightly drags the grid along with its rotation. When we drop an apple, even if it does not touch the Earth, the rotation of our planet influences it at a distance and slightly bends its trajectory and orientation. Okay, I didn't know that. Inside I thought it the Earth, like straight down. the grid continues to fall downwards. It seeks to draw everything towards the center. But the materials that make up our planet are resistant. They exert enormous outward pressure so as not to collapse on themselves. It is this pressure that we feel in our legs when we fall to the ground after a jump. At the center, the river converges, mm. and a marble, if it could withstand the immense pressure of the Earth's core, would remain there motionless. Arriving at the center, all the particles that make up the grid continue ahead and rebound until they emerge back out from the Earth. If we could jump through the whole planet, we would come out on the other side. Mm, don't know about that. Not with the gravity. In like, five billion years, our star will eventually die. The sun will no longer be able to generate its pressure and resist Let the flow notice. of the grid. Its core will collapse on itself, forming an extremely dense white dwarf, while its atmosphere will slowly expand into a gigantic planetary nebula. However, not all stars disappear in this way. A few hundred light years away, another star, a supergiant, is also burning its last fuel. Twenty times more massive than the sun, its internal pressure can no longer bear all its weight. The heart collapses and the outer layers bounce back, exploding into a supernova. The core compresses more and more until it forms a neutron star. It contains the mass of two suns in a space just 30 kilometers across. Wow. That's the crazy. grid of the it's universe not, not even is pulled heavy. so hard that light itself is dragged along, creating strange optical distortions. A few day. thousand light years away, another star, even more massive, is about to explode. In an instant, the core is carried towards the center and the outer layers are violently blown away. This time, the universe is stronger it drags the core of the star, unable to resist, towards the center where all the mass condenses. Within a small sphere, the universe is so curved that its fabric falls faster than light. Nothing can escape this hellish treadmill. Everything is carried downwards. Yeah. It is impossible to stay still hole. or even send a signal outwards. It's a black hole. In the universe, some black holes are born near another star, and they capture its matter in the form of a very high temperature plasma. Entering an orbit around the black hole, the plasma forms an accretion disk which loses energy and spirals towards the horizon. Inside the black hole, very close to the center, the flow becomes infinitely fast, and all objects are strongly torn apart. The grid stretches so violently that it separates atoms from each other and spaghettifies all bodies. That shit's crazy, dude. At the center, our current theories do not yet adequately describe the quantum behavior yeah, of space-time. Yeah, because it's so infinite. Like, what is at the center? Like, only, In the no universe, will, will, will nothing really, is static. No, I think it's impossible to figure all out. All stars more or less rotate on themselves. Unless we have, like, some kind of device that actually... When they like, die stay... and their core compresses to form a oh, black hole, their rotation hole. accelerates like an ice skater folding her arms alongside her body. This rotation is imprinted in the very fabric of space-time, which continues to rotate afterwards. 
Below a certain distance, inside what we call the ergosphere of the black hole, the entire grid is carried into a faster-than-light vortex, which drives bodies in the same direction of rotation. Even light is forced to rotate with the black hole. Damn, bro. Faster Below than the light. horizon, where the grid falls faster than light, such a black hole would have a second internal think, horizon like where the centrifugal speed, force like created Trek. by the rotation of space-time counteracts gravity and slows down the fall of the grid. Mathematics extends these internal horizons with white holes from which we could emerge to explore parallel universes. However, the inner horizon of a black hole is extremely unstable and probably doesn't exist. I don't know what, what's the in structure it, bro? at the center of a real black hole remains mostly mysterious. Finally, if two black holes meet, they can begin to dance, pulling each other faster and faster until they merge and form an even bigger black hole. This new black hole vibrates like a bubble and eventually stabilizes. During such an event, the entire fabric of the universe is driven by the vibrations. Gravitational waves more powerful than all observable stars form and escape at the speed of light, distorting everything in their path. I wonder how On September 14th, 2015, really well, after I mean, a journey of over like a billion years, one of these vibrations of ended up crossing the Earth. In the blink of an eye, the Earth shook by a fraction of the size of an atom. But for the first time in history, researchers had detectors to measure these vibrations. They bore witness to a cataclysmic fusion that happened more than a billion years ago. What In 2015, a whole new field of astronomy thus opened up. Gravitational wave astronomy, allowing us to probe the very structure of the universe. That's crazy. Well, that's a... Uh... Oh. Wow. What can you say, bro? Comment and subscribe down below. It's your boy, Black Finesse. We are out.